Hey everyone. Tomorrow I'm timing a race that has, uh, I was told may have 300 plus participants, um, or around 300 or so. However, uh, we've only got 71 registered right now. So I wanted to, before I pack it all up there, I wanted to show you a quick video on how I organize the, uh, the bibs and uh, everything I put on the registration tables. So first thing I do is, after the registration is closed, I will print off a roster and um, you know this comes from the program and when you print it off you'll see the total number of people that have uh, that have registered and what I'll do is I'll print that off and as you may have seen in my Marmaduke 5k videos uh, when the participant walks up they will uh, find their name or the volunteer would do this either one will find their name confirm their information is correct if it is they uh, they check off their that box right beside the number and of course the volunteer will hand them, hand them the bib number that goes with their name and so this is the roster that I'll use on the pre-registration table. Here's the bibs, 1 through 71, that have pre-registered. As you see, I use a safety pin through the uh, hole that's already in the, uh, in the bib, and I attach the shoe tags with that. And uh, now there's two tags per bib. Um, a lot, uh, this is something I have to discuss sometimes when people ask, why do I use two shoe tags? And pretty much the only reason why is because um, they're so inexpensive and you're gonna collect them back from the runner after the race so I always recommend uh, to buy twice as many shoe tags as the number of participants you expect or even hope uh, because worst case scenario let's say you have a whole lot more people registered than you expect well you can always revert back to using just one tag per bib um, and so uh, when you buy twice as many though, you might as well take advantage of all of them because you can put as many RFID tags on the participants as, as you want. Uh, you can even have one on the bib, two on the shoe, and you know you can have three on the bib if you want. Just have, have, you, know, have, you can have one on the hip or two, I mean, just however you want to handle it. But uh, For me, two on the shoe is just obviously double the reliability and the accuracy uh, because no matter what shoe hits the line first, you know, you're going to get a read right away. Um, and of course if you only had one tag on one shoe, then uh, I can just see that you know some dog run up and bite the tag off or something, which has never happened. But um, with only one tag, then if something were to happen with that one tag, then when that runner comes across, you you know he doesn't have a tag on, so there's no way to pick him up. Um, not a big deal. That should be such a rare thing that all you gotta do is you know, hit the space bar and type the number in, and it puts him right in there. Uh, you may have to adjust the uh, you know double click on his time and adjust it back by two seconds. But um, but anyways, uh, let me move on from there. So I uh, have the pre-registered bag set aside. This will be, be on the table for pre-registered athletes, of course. Got the roster that the volunteer or the runner will check off their name. And you may have seen in the Marmaduke video that um, I collect this sheet after the race has started. And I will, uh, there's a, an athletes tab. And I will click on that and right click on each athlete that did not check off their name. Um, so that I'll know who is not on the course. And what that'll do, of course, is at any time during the race, the program, yeah, you know, I can easily see, okay, who uh, is, you know, did show up and is still, you know, does not have a finishing time. And so you can easily see who's left on the course any time. But uh, because the shoe tags are a new style that a lot of people haven't seen yet, um, I will usually go ahead and print this off. I don't know that anyone really looks at it, but... Uh, and I can send you the Word document of this if you want to have this. Uh, you may want to scratch everything up here and just keep just the image, but uh, I will usually have this on the table. And if this is the first time that you've used this new shoe tag style, or if, if it's maybe the first few times you've used it, I would have one volunteer that their only job is to make sure that the tag is hanging off the side of the shoe. It does not need to be fed through the shoelaces. You really want to do your best to, not, uh, to have the participants where they don't crinkle it up and uh, damage the tag. So it's best to have it hanging off the side. I've seen some people that put both tags, I mean, right on top of each other. And I've actually seen that two tags, like, touching each other right on top of each other, uh, they may, like, I don't know if they cancel each other out or what the deal is, but um, you want to make sure it's just one tag per shoe and as much as possible hanging off the side. Uh, and so I would have one volunteer that just pretty much maybe as a Vanna White for shoe tags, they just kind of show them... Um, how the tags go, and of course maybe they walk around and kind of just eyeball everyone's shoe tags, make sure they're right. So that's the uh, the pages and the uh, bag that will go on the pre-registration table. On the race day registration table, of course I'll have one of these on there too, uh, and I will have starting with where this one left off. I will have you know bib number seventy-two, 
and it keeps going up. Obviously, as I run out of this bag, I just open that one. And the bags keep it to where if it's windy, you know, I don't have the bibs flying all around. Um, it also makes it to where, let's say I only use one through two ninety nine, which is, you know, all these bags here. Well, I've already got two bags that are packaged and ready to go. I don't have to, um, you know, I just throw them in my bag and they're ready for the next race. I'm sorry, my, my tub over there and it's ready for the next race. And so uh, the bags keep everything organized and makes it easy to find numbers. Because um, if I had 300 people pre-registered, I would obviously have three bags. And so if a uh, if person who was assigned number 299 walks up, I don't have to hunt starting with number one all the way to 299. I just open up that 200 bag, pull it out, and he's ready to go. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure you've seen this already. And by the way, these numbers I'm using, like this bib number 72, it kind of, it's hard to tell. You can tell it's kind of wrinkled. And this has probably been used um, maybe six or seven races. And so these numbers are pretty durable. They're pretty reliable. If you're a race director of just one race a year, or maybe one or two, these tags are passive tags. What that means is they, they virtually never, I mean, they, they don't go bad if you just leave them on the shelf for a few years even. I mean, they're... Uh, it's, I guess you can think of it like a comp, like a music CD. You know, if you take good care of it, there's no reason why it shouldn't last forever. Um, and so with these tags, I've used them um, six or seven times, maybe even more. Uh, and I, last week, I had my very first missed tag, but I did not see how the person was wearing them. And so she may have had them tucked in through the shoelaces or, or something. I'm not sure. Um, but it, it was bib number 75, which is just a couple more down. It looks brand new, and I've tested it. It works great. So the only thing I can assume is that it just wasn't worn right. But, um, but anyways, my point is, this is how I attach them. I use, I use a small safety pin because I, when I put safety pins in my shirts, I don't like to, to possibly rip a hole in them or leave any, any kind of hole in the shirt. So I use a real small safety pin, um, and I just use the holes that are on the bib and the shoe tag and link them up together. But, um, so anyways, that's how I organize my bibs. And uh, like I said, it keeps it to where I don't have to worry about the wind and I can easily find the numbers. Um, if you find a better way to do this, please let me know, but this is working well for me so far.